Bingo, 4 o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel, having a good time here on Think Tech on, on Wednesday. You know, and energy Wednesday is Energy Wednesday. Wednesday. And that voice way far away <laughs> than the table, that's Sharon Moriwaki. And the lady in between in the sandwich here is Chelsea Harder. Okay, and we were, when, when I heard that Chelsea was going to be here, I named the show Alone at Last, but then Sharon said, <laughs> said she was no, going to join no. us. Now, now I'm saying it's, uh, now I'm saying it's uh, Ménage uh, to energy, energy Awareness Month. <laughs> Ménage to Energy Awareness Month. Perfect. <laughs> Meme. <laughs> M-E-A-M. <laughs> Oh, what did you drink today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chelsea, what do we got in the Network moment today? Tell me everything. So um, we're focusing on uh, um, a professional development for teachers um, to bring energy efficiency into the classrooms. So we actually did a workshop in collaboration with CAHE. Um, so Hawaii Energy and CAHE partnered to... Just to say CAHE. CAHE. Um, so they're a five-year program that is uh, focusing on reducing the electric demand in the, um, the DOE schools, mm -hmm. and they're also bringing in PV, but they want to focus specifically on energy efficiency. So we developed this curriculum, a one-day free workshop for teachers at Honovai, so it's a K through six school. And what we're doing is giving them training, showing them how to bring energy efficiency into the classroom, and also tools. Um, and one thing is that we really want to bring home for the kids is this home energy audit, where the kids can involve their parents in, um, in looking at what their energy usage is and how they can reduce it. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> home energy audit. Yeah, let's hey, call yeah. it that. <laughs> Just trying to be helpful. Right, right. So they are, they're going to do that for the month of September, just in time for October, Energy Awareness Month. So we... Um, so those that are particularly interested in energy efficiency are going to be entering a contest where they have to write an essay about how energy efficiency is important in their home. Oh, you're really and the getting them where they live. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner will receive, um, a, it's called a, um, it's a home energy retrofit from Hawaii Energy. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through, look at their for light their bulbs. Home. Yeah, their exactly. Their parents oh. will love that. Yeah, oh, and it's it. free of charge yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah, They'll get yeah. to um, switch their faucets to um, to have low flow and low flow of shower heads, switch their lighting, all that good stuff. Lovely, so it's not lovely. only an audit, they're going to actually make the changes. Right, so right, for the winner, energy. for the one wow. who writes the best that essay and is most great. into energy efficiency. two things oh. about young kids. That's one is great. they listen. And they're going to teach they, their they parents, listen and they too. Remember. Right, and the right. Other thing yeah. is they are they talk to their parents. The, yeah. the yeah. parents yeah. can't escape them. So, right. so everybody gets involved. Right, they're Let's quite Let's see compelling. your movie now. This is the movie you made. You know, Chelsea is a star. I hope you still talk to us. <laughs> Chelsea is a star. Marvin Hung made this movie, right? Yes. Okay, let's see the movie. Woo. I can hardly wait. Johnson. I was an environmental science teacher for six years. Hi, my name is Tori Suarez. I'm the education program manager for the Kahi Project. My name is Chelsea Barger and I work with Boy Energy um, with the energy efficiency um, and conservation program. What we talk about oil and petroleum, though, it's not just used for energy. So there are over 6,000 items that are used to oil and petroleum. So this is kind of a bomb. so much energy. That's like 90 bucks per year for per bulb that you leave on for let's say 12 hours a day. <laughs> So, one more time, Kelsey, what, what is the spinning thing we just saw at the right? What is that? It's a flicker checker, so it can tell if a, um, if a ballast of a light bulb is magnetic or electronic. So what's the difference between a so, magnetic or electronic? Um, magnetic is the old school one, electronic is the, is the newer, more efficient one, so they have different frequencies, different wavelengths, so sometimes um, the old magnetic one, your eyes might get tired because they flicker, but mm. your brain will fill that in. So, um, so the kids, you know, try to follow would kind of fall asleep in the classroom. <laughs> um, but now we're switching over to um, new so CFLs no and new no, keep awake. Right, right. Oh. So our brain doesn't have to fill in that gap where it's... Oh, interesting. You know, one of the big policy points is, frankly, trying to get the public engaged. And um, until they get engaged, you know, we, we, we're, we're half a measure. 
anyway, if we want to do, you know, may I use your term, Sharon, transformational <laughs> things, we have to get them all engaged. There's no better way than by the kids, mm -hmm. no better way. Right, so right. So this, this is a big leverage thing that you're doing. They're fantastic champions in the home. And if, you know, if we don't make those changes, they're going to push us out of the way and make them for us. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to yell at us. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> All right, tell them, tell them what the message you want to leave. Surely there is a message. Look at the little red camera there, oh, camera thank one. You. It's looking, <laughs> you look at it, it looks at you. So um, I would love to say, please look at your home um, and look at hawaiienergy.com and see how you can make energy efficiency um, deci decisions in your home. Um, you can also call us, um, and you'll find the number at hawaiienergy.com, and we'd love to talk to you about it. Okay. Good. This is Jay Fidel reporting from um, Maynard uh, for Energy <laughs> Awareness Month. <laughs> Meme. <laughs> and when Sharon goes, it's going to be alone at last <laughs> with Chelsea Harder. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for joining guys. us, Chelsea. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Thanks for watching Think Tech this summer. We have a lot of terrific shows of great importance. And I hope you'll watch my show too every Tuesday at noon as we address sustainability issues for Hawaii. They're really pertinent as the World Conservation Congress approaches in September and the World Youth Congress that's focusing on sustainability next year as well. Have a great summer and tune in at noon every Tuesday. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. I pity the fool who ain't watching this show at 12 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Stan, the energy man, watch it. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me each Friday afternoon as we explore the amazing world of science. We bring on interesting guests, scientists from all walks of life, from all walks of science, to talk about the work they do, why they do it, and moreover, why it's interesting to you. What the science really means to your life its impacts on you, how it's shaping the world around you, and why you should care about it. I do hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. for Lakeable Science. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Okay, we're back. We're live. We've had our fun and games with uh, with uh, Chelsea Hodder and Sharon Moriwaki. Uh, now we're getting to the main part of the show here on Hawaii State of Clean Energy, and uh, we're talking about energy efficiency uh, with Derek Sonoda and my co-host on the far side of the table, uh, formidable, uh, also the host of uh, of Code Green every Monday, Howard Wig. Mm. Uh, applause. Mm. Applause. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Howard, why don't you introduce the show? Okay, this is Energy Awareness Month, as you just learned, and for some odd reason, I got picked to be the host, because I like to think of myself as the energy efficiency guy, and so I will be having superstars of efficiency throughout the month. I'll be introducing Derek Sonoda here, this diminutive young man, and then next week diminutive is... Diminutive, uh, I like that, Jolin. that's good, that's good. Keep he it going, Howard. The energy guy from Seattle and Seattle is the number one efficient city in the nation then Mr. Bissell from KIUC Kauai Utility who is possibly the leading utility in the nation in achieving hundred percent renewables clean energy and the wrap-up guy at the end of the month is Brian K. Aloha the new director of Hawaii Energy, and I think everybody is familiar with Hawaii Energy, and we'll be going gangbusters the whole month. That's a great lineup, no kidding. Mm -hmm. Nice work, Howard. Yeah. 
You want to be the, the producer. Wait well, a minute, I, he is I, the producer. I had, had a little help from my friends, or should I say strong <laughs> suggestions. Yeah. Well, let's, let's begin with Derek. Mm -hmm. Why is Derek here? Derek is Mr. Energy Efficiency in general and Mr. Lighting Efficiency in particular. Very, very distinguished career. He was one of the efficiency guys for Hawaiian Electric. Then he was one of the efficiency guys for Hawaii Energy. And now, get this title, I have to read it, Director of Strategic Initiatives. That's oh. the impressive one. Oh. For Pono Solutions. And Derek's going to tell us all about what Pono Solutions is. And we're in particular going to talk about lighting efficiencies, how to select a good lighting vendor, good lighting product. And I may have an opinion or two as we go along. Plus, we've got a slideshow to <laughs> direct us along the way. So, Derek, take it away. And as you want the, a new slide, just say, can I have the next uh, slide? Sure, great. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this. So I'm with a firm called Pono Solutions. And the reason why Pono selected myself and I selected Pono was they were trying to do something, and I'm going to just say old school. What they wanted to do was bring a lot of truth back into the lighting industry, do it correctly, and honor the customer and what the customer really wanted. And the way energy efficiency starts off with for everyone is we start off with lighting because everyone understands light. You flip a switch and the light comes on. The unfortunate part about that is because it's so well understood this way, people think it stops there, especially on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. And so Howard and I have been doing lighting for almost two decades now, and we know that there's a lot more to just turning on a light, a light switch, and you get your light. You have to know what kind of light. You have to know what kind of work is being done on the light. You have to know a lot of different things. And then we got a little bit sassy over the years where color rendition was really important. Because we had the hospitality industry. You mean in for mood? For mood. Mm -hmm. But you also set the ambiance with this thing. And if you're not trained in this discipline, it's easy to misunderstand what needs to be done. And so we were constantly seeing the misunderstanding. And what would happen is the customer would get energy efficiency, but the poor things would have to do it again mm -hmm. for one reason or another. They got the wrong light in there, or the installation was incorrect. For some reason, um, it had to be redone. And the taste coming out of the customers, in my opinion and others, is it wasn't the best that it should be. And so I realigned myself with the lighting industry and some of the pillars of Hawaii's industries. Mm -hmm. And we're very fortunate that the pillars of Hawaii align with the pillars of the nation. And we have a lot of good friends backing us up nationwide about how we can set Hawaii back on a path for really good lighting efficiencies. Yeah. And we've been really proud about that. So one of the things... I'd like to begin at the beginning. When I was a small child, mm -hmm. my mother said, of course, and well, all mothers say this, she said, you're not, you're leaving the room, turn off the light. Turn off the light. Because, I mean, even though it wasn't as much money then, um, it was important to save it money. Was. And if you left a light on in the room, then, you know, I always feel nervous as a result my whole life, leaving a room with the light still on. But did your mom waste. also make another comment? What? Don't play with the light switch? Because the light did. might she did. go out. Yeah, well, oh, you might electrocute yourself, my goodness mm -hmm. sake. So that's one thing I just want to throw in the hopper. The other thing I want to throw in the hopper for you guys to consider is if you go to a hotel on the mainland, many, many hotels have this, or if you go to Europe, most of them have it in Europe, take your room card, okay, and after you enter the room, you put it in the switch there. In, in yes. The premise, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and the lights in the room do not work yes. unless the room card is in, that, is in that little receptacle, okay? And it's, it's this elegant because it means that if the light switch, if you're not there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the lights can't be absolutely. on. And My mother would be happy. Oh, yes, she absolutely. She would be proud. There, there is one state in the nation that has built that uh, policy into its building code. Guess what state that is? It starts with an H. New Hampshire. Yeah. It doesn't start with an H. It starts with an N, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii is... Well, we easy. think alike. Hawaii. Hawaii leads the nation in requiring this, exactly. Oh, this. is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a slide on how good lighting projects start. So mm -hmm. I don't know how we work the magic here, but if we could have that slide up on the screen, okay, that would we go. be really good. There it is. So we're doing lighting questions today. 
And I want to go to the next slide after this is how good lighting project starts. We want to start with an education process, information, experience, learning, solutions. It's basically knowledge. And we have some great people who are really good in this discipline of lighting. Howard is one of them. And we have some other people out there. You can ask me later or email me. And I will tell you who those people are. And they, what they do better is they will tell you the honest truth. And then they, they may or may not be able to help you with their product line, but they will tell you the truth. And that's something that I'm really proud of, that these people will tell you, okay, this works the best in your applications. Mm -hmm. So if we can go to the sec next slide. You're going to switch out from whatever lighting technology you have to the newest and greatest LED lighting. You will get energy savings. But what we don't know is what else. So you pick a product. And here's the thing that's been just kind of out there everywhere is, here's the question. Yeah, does the length of the warranty period match the length of the company's existence, who've been producing all of this. And it's really easy to say, I'm going to give you a 10-year warranty. We're a two-year-old company. Mm -hmm. And how can they say that, and you can believe that? Well, I'm not too concerned else. with the two years in the past. I'm concerned with the 10 years in the future. That's exactly right. Yeah. Will they be there? That's a big question mark. Yeah. But yeah. to understand that is the very first step into making an informed decision. And, and let me jump in and say that LEDs still have a Wild West quality about very them. Very much so. Yeah. We, what the, does that mean, Howard? We, the, all the companies that are jumping into the American market are not thoroughly tested and vetted. There is a test procedure set up by the U.S. Department of Energy not all companies go through that, jump through the hoops, and show their results. If they haven't done that, Lord knows what you're going to do. So get. if I'm, you know, in the market here, mm -hmm. I'm a client or, I'm, you know, I'm a landowner or, or a, a homeowner, mm -hmm. and I want to do the right thing and I want to avoid that Wild West pitfall, what do I do? Where do I look? Do I, who do I call? The Derek, simple. what's your phone number? I Only kidding. Bet, uh, I bet Derek's <laughs> going to talk about that. But simply put, if you want to do that in your own verification, because a lot of people do, just go to the companies where the manufacturer you're thinking about and find out when they started. And find out when but they started. Why is when they started relevant? You know, they could be well capitalized with smart management. They could have the most, you know, highly technical guys in the world. Yes. That, that will tell me more than how long they've been in business. You know, I don't think you can say if they've been in business two years, they can't do a warranty for 10. No, it's looking forward, not backward. No? Well, about six years ago, a company came in front of a lot of people in Hawaii, and they said, you know, we had some people start over from NASA. We're starting an LED company, yeah. and their products look terrific. Yeah. That company doesn't exist today. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't fund so you have to make an evaluation. You have to make an evaluation and you put your own value is on Is there it. an organization around that will rate them for me? Mm -hmm. There is Energy Star. But Energy Star has limited rating capabilities. And you're going to have to go there. And at least it's the first good start. Mm -hmm. And their criteria have been getting harder and more stringent every year. So that's really good. But a lot of people say, well, Energy Star, they don't rate everything. So how can you use Energy Star? But it's the only thing we have. Only thing we have. The but only you know, I mean, have. how high are the stakes really? If I get if I get a Wild West company without a warranty, uh, and I get a company, you know, that that's solid, that's established, that has the best of the best, and gives me a warranty, am I right to say that the second company is going to charge me more? Here, let me put it this way: If you put a, a project in there, and you get a thirty percent failure rate, let's say the thirty percent of the lamps go up. And lamps today for LEDs, they're not inexpensive no. for these things on the commercial side. So if you kind of just do that numbers in your head, if you had a, let's say, a half a million dollar project, and you had 30% failure rate in the first two or three months. That would cost me some money. Well, not only that. I mean, what are you thinking that the product's going to last you for the whole duration of the five, ten years that you're planning for it? The likelihood in your mind is questionable now on what's going to happen. So you want to make the best so informed decision. Turned off. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you get turned off. <laughs> you get really turned off because you, <laughs> you don't know what's real and who to believe. So these questions are to spur the thought process. Yeah, Not to judge, to spur the thought process and let the client, the customer, make an informed decision. So we're going to go to the next slide. This question over here has been going around. What makes your lighting expert an expert in lighting? So sometimes you got to ask the question, what's your background? Because this person could be a really sharp salesperson. But if you ask him what you did five years ago and he tells you I was selling furniture, um, 
you may want to go, oh, that's nice. Yeah, or ask him about furniture. Or did you take any classes? <laughs> Do you have any certifications? <laughs> did you go through a training background? Stop and just ask What is this question. expertise going to do for you? I mean, is it a matter of him um, giving you good advice, or is it a matter of him doing the right kind of installation, or is it... All of the above. Okay. All of the above. So those are questions that people aren't asking. So since I've moved over to Pono Solutions, I got a chance to hear what customers are saying, and they're not asking these questions, but they should ask these questions because they might come out with a different outcome of who they select and what products that they put in there. So what makes them an expert? I'll give you, for example, on that slide, what makes a lighting expert and a lighting experts? There are two bodies out there that rate products for safety. One we all recognize called UL, and another one called ETL. Everybody says to me they're the same. It's not true. They're two independent laboratories, and one follows the protocol of another for testing, but they're not the same. What's so, different? What's different is they're independent. So I'll give you, for example, yeah, Toyota and Lexus, same company. Did you know they have different design criteria for Lexus and for Toyota? They will design a Lexus to last X number of years. I don't want to give their secret away. And they will design a Toyota for something a little smaller than the X for Lexus. Two same things, not equivalent. The two cars, when you drive them, are different. But they are, everybody goes, but it's under the Toyota umbrella. Yes, it's under the Toyota, but not the same. So same when you say not the same, same, which one is the better one? UL? It's going to be up to them. So here's the differentiator. How do I make people. my choice? Yeah, for UL, the process of waiting for this entity is a lot longer for manufacturers, and they have to pay a lot more. The process for ETL is they don't charge as much to test your product, and they have multiple laboratories all across China and the US, so they can do a lot more throughput. So as a customer, if you feel you're comfortable with UL, and stick by it, don't let anybody talk you different. So we have a lot of history in Hawaii, and I don't want to make up people's minds for them, but we have a lot of history that the UL one is tried and true. Is the government involved here? Does the government no. say that UL is, no. is like this? And Nobody the, oversees them. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you have to read up. You have to you know. You have to read yeah. up. And then there's other two um, logos on that slide. One is going to be IES, Illuminating Engineering Society. Both Howard and I belong to that. And Howard, what does this entity actually do for everyone? It promotes professionalism in lighting. You put out many, many, many publications. The IES handbook is now literally that thick with specifications. If you, Jay, could memorize that handbook, you'd be a millionaire. The, the world would be beating a path to your door. But nobody has ever m memorized that handbook. It's so intricate. May, may I it's say the so same for you? If you, you yes, know. yes, yes. Maybe you're already a millionaire. Anyway, so. But the point we, is, yeah, there is a body is. that's out there yeah. that's mm -hmm. setting standards yeah. that the question may be to your expert or mm -hmm. do you belong to IES and have you um, gone to some of the IES trainings or seminars? Yeah, there are so, all so kinds of training, lots of training. So, yeah. so this is something you want to look for in the person mm -hmm. who, you, who you hire to either yeah. design or install Absolutely. lighting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So there's another entity called NEMA, and NEMA sets the quality standards for energy efficiency for manufacturers. Yeah? So a lot of products, they will have the NEMA logo, especially on for, for LEDs. Um, we have it on the fluorescent tubes for ballast, and then we have drivers mm -hmm. for LEDs. If you have this over there, you know it's been tested and optimized for energy efiency. And NEMA, NEMA stands for? National, National Energy, I forget, what National Efficiency it? Manufacturers Association. Didn't, didn't Jules Verne write about NEMA? Yeah, it was a little bit different though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they had a cousin called NEMO. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> A little bit different. We're okay. on the energy show. We are. <laughs> okay, so all of those things. And one of the other things is your experts. You ask this thing. So the people doing the installation, there's actually an entity yeah, that teaches and certifies the installers to do just lighting. So this entity over here is, I'm going to pronounce it wrong because it's an acronym, Nam NAMCO, N-A-L-M-C-O. They have a certification process for the people touching the light fixtures to make sure that they're installing it properly. What do you have to do to get the certification? You have to study for the test. Yeah. yeah, you have to do this. It's an online thing. And on the mainland, we don't have it here in Hawaii yet. We're working towards that with these group of um, people that we're aligned ourselves with to do some of this certification. Because what we've been seeing on the road, um, you wouldn't want that in your house. So we want to do lighting 
installation training. Okay, let's regroup and go back to that slide. Where <clears throat> all these organizations were listed, uh, so we can just uh, summarize. This is uh, where, uh, there it is. Okay, so you want to look for ETL or UL, and you're not, you're not recommending here today. You but just got to know and ask I'm the difference. I'm surmising that UL has been around a long time. That's a, that's a factor. And then uh, IES, you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure there's an IES, uh, what you call? Person uh, there, person giving you there. information about Training. lighting. Okay, lighting. Yeah. And NEMA, you want to make sure that the, the guys, NEMA, cert NEMA certified. The yeah. products are the products energy are. efficiency. Okay, okay. So yeah. especially on yeah the ballast and the drivers. For LED products, yeah. the driver is the weaker component. Everybody yeah. talks about the chip, but it's the driver that usually yeah. fails. Okay, now the kind of company we're talking about that would have these various certifications is what? It's an energy efficiency company that you hired to come and do an audit of your house or your business? We're talking for commercial. Yeah. So, for example, the company that I am with Pono Solutions holds all the credentials. Okay. There is one more that I want to make a mention to, which is going to be for safety education. So a lot of people say, well, it's only lighting. You don't have to be all this training for safety. But for lighting, especially because people aren't um, fully aware of all of it, there's a lot of shock hazards. And we go through the training to really highlight how to be safe because it's not just highlighting for the employees, it's for everyone around. So if you had a commercial facility, let's say a retail mm -hmm. store, you have to do some lighting repair. You're working on that fixture live, the power's not off, because the story has got to operate, and the people have to be trained on who touches that, and they have to have, to have a certain Wait, have, you know, Electricians are involved. They're licensed. Howard can tell us that you know there's all kinds of government involvement. I asked before about regulation. Mm -hmm. This is definitely regulated. This, this is, is dangerous. Regulated. This is very so, dangerous. So mm -hmm. why, why do we have to have... Oh, this is IFMA. IFMA is doing this. We so know IFMA. You know IFMA, and they've yeah. been promoting all of these things. So 70E training. There's a 2005 edition. There's also lockout and tag out protocol training, which is very important. The large commercial facilities have been hearing rumblings about all of these new standards, and they're asking questions. Unfortunate part about it is the people who are doing the labor work haven't heard too much about it yet. Mm -hmm. So if Hawaii has been taking the charge. Very up and coming. They won the transformational award. Absolutely. At They've been pushing this. So we want to get anybody who's doing lighting Get your people so, safe. So the building owner or manager of the company should be looking for that as well as the other ones you mentioned. If, yeah. Now, Howard, if I told you that we had one minute to go on this show, what would you say as co-host? What would you say? Extend the show. We haven't even gotten warmed Absolutely. up yet. Absolutely. Yeah. But lighting is your very <laughs> first step into energy mm -hmm. efficiency. Mm -hmm. But when you do it not the best way, then you have a bad taste and you may not take step two, which is going to be looking at your air conditioning. Uh, yeah, air conditioning is another, but lighting first. Yeah. Everybody starts off lighting, lighting. first. There, there was an article in today, this morning's paper where a construction guy was drilling into a wall. He drilled into a live wire, fell down the ladder. He got in, he was in very critical shape in oh the hospital my goodness. now. Yeah. Not from the shock, but the fall. Uh, no, the shock followed oh, the by show. the fall. Oh my, oh my it, it was a tremendous day. shock, ca cardiac. Uh, oh, bad yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Well, Howard, uh, but seriously, if I told you we had, you know, half a minute to go, what would you say to the people? I would what would you say about Derek, for example? Oh, he's a great guy. I knew you'd say yeah. that. I knew oh, say thank that. you. <laughs> Why don't you close the show? You're the co-host. Are, are you serious? I am. Watch oh this. Goodness. Watch this. Howard's going to close the show, okay. and Derek is going to agree with everything that Howard has to say. Derek's emphasis is that you don't go into the lighting field blind. It is immensely complex. You, Derek and I have been in the field forever, and we don't claim to know everything. If you're going to be purchasing lighting, looking at different sources, you really, really need to check out who you are doing business with because you may get a used car salesman who is now into the used lighting business. <laughs> and or worse, a furniture salesman. The jewelry guys really scare me. <laughs> the, you, you're going to be, you, you're asking for trouble if you don't really check out who you're entering into contract with. All, All right, yes or no question, everything. Derek. Yes. How much of what he said do you agree with? Uh, Howard speaks the truth. We have to be careful with the lighting. Because if your first project or first step into energy efficiency doesn't produce great fruit, will the funders let you do a second step? <laughs> That's Derek Sonoda. He knows how to handle a yes or no question. <laughs>
<laughs> That's Howard Wig. Great co-host work. You ought to be on sure. Think Tech, huh? I should. Well, you just give me an invitation and I'll, I'll accept. <laughs> there you have it. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, here on a given Wednesday. With Derek Sonoda, Howard Wig, are Thank we you. having fun? Thank you, Thank you, Thank you.